this last section of lecture on erosion modeling, we will show some applications. So here is the area that you will be doing for an assignment. You can see that uh, during the large storms, we have a lot of sediment coming out of this watershed in spite of the fact that it's nicely covered by vegetation and these are corn fields. So we would like to find out where is all this sediment coming from. So here we have a digital elevation model and here we have simulated sediment for uh, derived from this digital elevation model. And here is the analysis of uh, soil detachment by revised universal soils equation that it's three-dimensional simplified form and you can see that when we run this run this model we can identify this section that has some concentrated flow and steep slope as potential source of sediment and there is also this vineyard that sometimes has bare soil when it is tilled that can potentially be also a significant source of sediment that we have seen flowing through the uh, through this concentrated flow uh, area and you can see that with high resolution digital elevation model and the form of uh, uh, soil loss equation that includes Con, uh, upslope contributing area, we can simulate observed phenomena like this developing gully. It's still a large reel, but you can see that we can capture these features forming here. Then we can also run erosion net erosion and deposition model so here this part shows where the sediment or where the soil is detached and this result shows where we have net soil loss and net soil gain and you can see that there is some impact of uh, how this uh, how this field is managed um, on the topography so there are very subtle convex and concave areas that lead to erosion and deposition but there is still a significant potential of erosion here so these are these features that we have shown already on this photo and we also see pretty high erosion in the center um, area of water flow convergence and these simulations, both for soil detachment and net erosion and deposition, were done for land use scenario shown here, where these uh, orange areas are agri agricultural areas and the green areas are covered by, uh, by grass. And this is just an example how you can modify the topography to incorporate this feature where we, we can see that the terrain, the elevation has actually changed only subtly, but the change is there. And you can do it by converting erosion rate to change in elevation in centimeters, and then you can subtract it from the digital elevation model. And you will need to work with lighting and shading to uh, highlight this very subtle uh, carved in channel from the that is the result of the erosion model. Here is another example for Centennial uh, Campus uh, construction of golf course and we already talked about how the removal of forest in this area will lead to higher runoff and this runoff will then have an impact on uh, uh, spatial pattern and rates of erosion and it can increase uh, erosion rates more than 10 times uh, actually uh, increases 50 to 100 times are quite common but what is very interesting 
and where the geospatial modeling uh, can contribute to better understanding of uh, impacts um, of erosion is that you can see that here the highest erosion rates are within the buffer. So we have a nice forested area and within this forested area we have these very high erosion rates due to high runoff. So here we have it in detail. So you can see again that the highest erosion rates will be within this buffer. And the sheet flow, uh, relatively low erosion uh, rates and low sediment flow, that can be deposited within the buffer. So the buffer will protect from uh, relatively uh, low erosion rates. But if we have a lot of concentrated water coming in, then the buffer is not very effective. Uh, so what we have done, we have done a number of different experiments with check dams, little ponds and other measures and we have found that extension of this uh, buffer can improve runoff and we already talked about it, but it will also have a great impact of minimizing erosion here. So you can see that, that uh, by including extended forested buffer, we can cut the potential, like the worst case scenario, uh, erosion to less than quarter what it would be, although it still would be higher than what it is right now if the forest was there uh, uh, within the entire area. And then we will finish by this rather interesting example of simulation of impact of so-called hedges. And these hedges are used to uh, stimulate landscape benching. So what happens here if we have a slope that is pretty straight and has a constant uh, uh, slope angle, if we put hedges here in these areas, so these are just about like one or two meter wide uh, hedges, and these are the point experimental uh, data where erosion and deposition was measured along these uh, along these uh, hedges. So after a couple years, what happens because of the erosion here and deposition in this area, uh, the uh, so-called benches or subtle terraces are formed on this hill slope. So instead of constant slope, we will get a steeper slope, flatter area, steeper slope, flatter area. So we have tried to simulate this uh, using our erosion deposition model and it has proven to be quite difficult. But, uh, but here you can see the predicted erosion and deposition pattern. So we have deposition uh, on top and then we have erosion and then we have again deposition and erosion but there is also impact of uh, water flow dispersal land convergence and you can see it here that it is not a straight line uh, but that it um, that a different shape also evolves here but what is interesting when you run this as an animation uh, without smoothing between the steps there are very subtle artifacts due to discretization of uh, the sediment flow into grids. Uh, and this very subtle artifact grows with each step until it essentially simulates something like generation of reels. But because we have a, a regular grid, these reels are very regular. So although in this simulation it is really an artifact that is generated uh, in nature, this functions similarly. We have very small disturbance that then grows and creates these ra rather large features like reels and uh, reels and gullies in the landscape. So with this 
we can uh, now look at uh, uh, where the future direction of uh, geospatial modeling and analysis is, and that's uh, uh, WebGIS providing these analysis and modeling tools through a web application so that you don't need to download any data and you don't need to download any software. Everything is provided online as a service. And we have seen a very nice example of this. You may remember the photovoltaic GIS that allowed us to map uh, potential for photovoltaic energy. And here is another example, a little bit low resolution for the zoomed in area. It looks much better when you do it for larger areas. That allows to model erosion and deposition fully online. Uh, it's just restricted at 30 meter resolution. So it provides you with the subwatersheds and erosion rates for each of these sub-watersheds and also erosion deposition map.